Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, you are awesome and you're always given. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There you go. All right. So we're good to go here today. Philippians chapter number two. We welcome everyone to Facebook um, today. We thank you for being with us at Mount Moriah Holiness Church. And we're going to the book of Philippians chapter number two. Verse number 6 through 11. Amen. We'll be talking today about the blessings of humility. The blessings of humility. Amen. Philippians 2 and 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the life of men. Amen. I need a different mic. Hallelujah. And being formed in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even to the death on the cross. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Even to death on the cross. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So I'm going to have to do a little shift just to make it easy today. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for the word today. We thank God that his word is real. The blessings of humility. Amen. You may be seated. Father, we thank you for this great day. Thank you for the great opportunity just to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. The blessings of humility. Amen. Let's turn this one off. Just turn this one off. That's the main thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we don't get any feedback today. All right, here we go. The blessings of humility. The blessings of humility. When we think about humility, we, the Lord himself in Matthew, the 11th chapter, if you turn over there, want us, all believers, to be humble. All believers should be humble. Matthew 11, I believe, and verse 28, we start there. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So here the Lord is encouraging us to come to him to, uh, listen, if we're going to be humble and have humility, we have to receive it from God. We cannot manufacture it on our own because um, we can go only so far. But once we are born again, and once we accept the kingdom of God as children, then God can increase that humility that we do have as people, amen? So when we think about being humble and why we need to be humble, because it gives certain access to believers. We have certain access that we wouldn't normally have to God when we are humble people, amen? Jesus says simply, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How many people are laboring? How many people are heavy laden, amen? You have to think about what you're going through in your life. What's happening in your world today? Amen. And if you're going through anything at all, if life is just great for you, then that's wonderful. Amen. Uh, but if you're going through anything at all, Jesus says simply come unto me. Amen. You don't make a big fuss. Don't make a big show. Just come unto me. Amen. 
And he says, if you will come to me, I will give you rest. How many are toiling? Amen. How many are struggling with life? Amen. Instead of being restful and at being at peace with yourself. Amen. Jesus is inviting you today. He is saying, come unto me. Amen. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. In other words, Jesus wants you to now begin to educate yourself. Somebody shout the word educate. Educate yourself in the knowledge of God. Amen. Because when you do that, God is able to impart what? That rest. Amen. He's able to impart that rest. He says, I am meek. Here's the first lesson. I am meek and lowly in heart. Amen. I am meek and lowly in heart. That's the first lesson. We need to learn this lesson of being meek and lowly. Meek and lowly. Amen. Not just lowly, but meek and lowly. <laughs> Amen. Being humble, having that spirit. Amen. That is in us. Amen. That can bring us to a place where God can bless us. Many people are talking about the favor of God, but you can't have God's favor until you humble yourself. You can't have God's favor until you become lowly. You can't have God's favor until you do what Christ asks of you. Amen? Now, I want to turn to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Amen. Because I'm going to go back. I'm going to end in Philippians by the grace of God, but I want to go through a simple little thing here with you. Matthew 18, and at the same time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Notice that is a question, who is the greatest? Amen. And something about us, we want to be great. Amen. And uh, listen, I, I have nothing against anyone being great. Great is a good thing. David said the Lord had made him great. Amen. God had made him great, but we should let God do it. Amen. We should not, hallelujah, make ourselves something. Amen. Because when we move in that realm, then we move it in the realm of pride. Amen. And we know that pride, the pride of life, right, is one of those things that will keep you out of God's will. So let's look at verse 2 in the 18th chapter. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And said unto them, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and come Become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So now, Jesus said if you want to measure greatness, you have to measure it by your humility. You must measure it by your humility. Are you humble? Amen. Are you a humble person? And if you're Bless, amen. If you're going to be blessed, then you're going to have to humble yourselves. Amen. God requires humility out of every one. Amen. Because when we are humble, what God can do then is he can convert us. He saw the word, right? He can convert us. He can change us. He can turn us. He can mold us. He can shape us. God can't do any of that th without us humbling ourselves. We like that parable in Jeremiah, in the uh, yeah, 18th chapter of Jeremiah, where he's the potter. He uses the pot, and he's turning it, and he breaks it, and then he fixes it again. And we like to talk about how he does that, but you have to be humble. Amen. If the pot wasn't humble to stay up there on the spinning wheel, guess what? God couldn't make anything out of it. Amen. You have to be a humble person. Amen. If God is going to use you, if God is going to... Take your life, hallelujah, and use it for his glory and use it for his kingdom. You're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to think lowly. Amen. Now, what is lowly? Am I to think less of myself? Am I to think um, not have any self-esteem? That's not what God is talking about. But what God is talking about is I don't think more of myself than I should think of myself. Amen. I have a good measurement of who I really am in life. Amen. I don't pretend to be what I'm not. Amen. Amen. Lowly people are realists. Amen. Because they know who they are. Amen. And, and they don't try to project an image of being something that they're not. Amen. And so God wants us to be in that frame of mind of being a humble person. Go to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Amen. I think it's 14. Amen. 
Yeah, it must be 14 because I'm not there. Yeah, the 14th chapter of St. Luke. And we're going to go to verse number 7. And he put forth a parable unto them, those which were bidden, when he saw how they chose out the sheep room, saying unto them, all right, Jesus is looking at some disciples, amen? And he's given a parable because of a dinner that was happening. And in the parable, he's wanting to train them or teach them a great lesson, amen? Now, in loneliness, amen? In loneliness, verse 8, when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say unto thee, give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. Verse 11 is the key. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. That is one of the blessings of humbling yourself. God can exalt you. God can raise you up higher. He's given a natural example here so that you can just look at a natural situation. When you go into a great function and you're dressed up and you're looking good and nice, don't sit in the best prominent, most prominent place. Amen? Sit in a place that's a little bit further off so that they can move you up. Amen? Leave room for someone else to exhort you. Leave room for someone else to put you higher. Because if you make yourself higher, they may have to come in and say, you have to move. Amen. And that's where that shame come in. That's where that embarrassment comes in. When you have to take down. Amen. I remember as a young minister, when we came, uh, first got saved, they would always tell us, when you go visit in a church, don't just run up to these folks' pulpit area. Sit in the audience somewhere. Amen. Which is very good advice. Sit in the audience somewhere. Amen. Because why? If you go up to the pulpit, they may tell you, we don't have a seat for you. Amen. Yeah, these seats are all taken. Amen. And then you're embarrassed and you have to come all the way back down in front of that whole congregation. Jesus says, don't bother with that stuff. Just humble yourself. Sit out in the audience. Sit out in the audience. Let God exalt you. Because when God exalts you, guess what? Nobody can pull you down. Amen. But when you allow people and put yourself forward, someone can always come and bring you down. You want to avoid that. You have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself. God wants you to have this mindset. It's, it's not that you're not as important as the next person, by the way. It's just that you may not have been on the program. Amen. Yeah, you may be even more important than them, but if you're not on the program, you still don't get to go sit there. Amen. So you have to understand, things go by functions. Amen. All right, let's read the next part, though. Verse 12. Then he said unto them that bid him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends. Now, this is interesting that Jesus says this. Don't call your friends, because most times we call those we love. Mm-hmm. He said, nor your brethren, neither your kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made of thee. All Jesus is saying is, if you invite those you love, uh, they're going to invite you back to their party. <laughs> and they expect you to show up. Amen. And they expect you to show up with gifts. By the way, don't just come. Amen. Amen. You, you'd be one of those that just came. Be like Matthew 22, right? How did this fellow get in here? Cast him out. <laughs> Amen. But, but we want to be humble. Amen. And Jesus is trying to teach a lesson. Part of the blessings of being humble is when you're throwing a big benefit, don't throw it for people you know. Don't throw the benefit for people you know. Amen. You want to have a barbecue? Don't invite your family. That's what brethren is, family. Right? You having a barbecue, don't invite your family. Because guess what? They're going to talk about you anyway, right? No, no. All right. Y'all know that happens, right? 
Hey, talk about your dinner. But no, let's go. Don't, he says, don't just call your personal friends that you love. Amen. Let's see who he wants us to get. Verse 13. But when thou hast made a feast, call the poor. Oh, call the man. Call the lamb.